right, so attempt to do this all in one go. All right, so this is a response to um, this user's question. He was asking how to basically add montages to DCS. I've done a video on this before, but I didn't do one specifically on on attacking and stuff. Um, so this one is a little different than the last one in terms of what's going on in the framework because it is using ALS as a backing because um, I did the merge and the merge that I did is following um, Ibizu's tutorials here where he does the uh, ALS and DCS merge and then does the bug fixes and stuff like that using this video and this video. Um, and if you do this, make sure that you read the comments uh, because the comments will tell you to go under like ability underscore player and do something with the camera that's that's relative to uh, to the arrow. So you'll want to do that as well um, if you're following that tutorial. But this this method does work for the for just the base DCS or whatever uh, dynamic combat system version you're working with, assuming that you're still using the same data table uh, system. So anyway, we're going to start here by uh, retargeting. I just added the sword and shield anim sets from Kubold. Um, so we're going to go in here really quickly, open up the skeleton. Uh, where is it? Yeah, just set the humanoid. But the pose is wrong, so you'll want to reset the pose. Save that. Uh, look at this thing. Yeah, it looks like I retargeted everything to my ALS skeleton for the merge. So that's there. I do have sockets, but I can just copy them over if I want. There's not really a point though. Anyway. So I'm just going to do this the quick and lazy way. I don't always recommend doing it this way, but I'm going to. retarget everything to the ALS mannequin. Okay, now that everything's retargeted, just so it shows up correctly, I'm fix up the redirectors. So now when I go to my <clears throat> sword animations, you'll see that they are showing the ALS skeleton and everything is working properly. Okay, so uh, first I'm gonna wanna look and select some animations that are gonna look pretty all right together. So here's my first one is a swing right. And my second one is going to be swinging from left to right. So my guy's gonna swing right and then he's gonna swing left to right. So I'm going to um, Create a animation montage of both of these. And I'm just gonna make sure I remember their name, sword attack. Whatever. Okay. Now under the data tables here, you'll see that this is the there's data table player and data table AI. The AI ones are not the ones we're changing right now, just for this example, we'll change the player ones. So under here you can see light attack and there's these two montages here for light attack. This was collapsed before but uh, if I open it up you can see the two montages. So when you're doing this you're like whatever you're doing whether you're doing a roll or you're doing the parry or you're doing any any montage changes open these up and then open up the montage itself and look at some key specifics here like this says default group full body that's very important. Um, the animation, animation notifications have to be copied over. They don't have to be the same spot or, or whatever, but they have to, uh, they should really re reference certain points within the animation that certain things are happening. So right off the start one, this one has a rotate owner so that your guy's facing, um, the opponent. And then as the input buffer happens, that prevents somebody from spamming input. So 
I always like to say that the input happens at the point of commitment. Sorry, the input buffer happens at the point of commitment. So like when the roll is, there's there's no going back or the swing for instance is mid swing, you're right about to hit the enemy kind of thing, that's when you swing. But that's also just after that when the hitbox happens. So this hitbox is pretty long because hitting an opponent with your sword when you're that high up is a little silly. If I was doing it, the hitbox would be shorter. But, and then there's the cue there to match the hitbox. And then ignore room motion at the end. Okay, so what we're going to want to do is, just so I can show you, I'll switch to the sword one that we made here, sword right, and then there's the one-handed one still there. Put these up here. Okay. So when I start now, as soon as I swing, my guy just walks forward and doesn't do anything. That's because we didn't set the slot. So if I set the slot to full body, you can say as soon as I open it again, it'll refresh. But oh, now I swing, but now I can't swing again. Nothing happens. The reason why that is is because there's no input buffer on there. So it's still, as far as it's concerned, the input is still consumed and we're still swinging. Um, anyway, in order to add that, basically what I'll do is I'll just look at one of the other ones again, like I said, and start copying notifications over. It's a lot easier to just copy them one at a time as quick as you can, kind of, and then place them after, I find, just because they're never going to be at the same spot. And this is a tedious process, admittedly. So now that I have those all copied over, I'm going to want to make sure everything's at the right time. That's at zero. That's the end. So that's good. Like I said, the input buffer will set to the moment of commitment, so to speak. So about, you know, right around there, there's no going back. He's, you're swinging. So, so you can set your input buffer fairly early on something like this. I'll just put it there as an example. Um, the other thing we didn't check which is important to check is when the input buffer ends. So again, it depends on, on the attack and whoever programmed it, but it's basically the last moment that you'd strike and that's, or before you'd want to re-enter input. And I just think that that's really, really long, but the shorter you make them as well, it'll allow people to spam. So if you make them too short, which we'll see if we can do that, then it'll kind of make things wonky. Um, I'll iterate around, you know, anywhere around here is fine, like within these couple frames. So I'll just put it there as a long one. My hitbox will probably be just after. Yeah, even there. Something like that. The Q actually sounds really dumb there because it's not, it's, it's a swing, right? So you're supposed to hear it with the wind of the swing. And if it's too late, then it's going to be like when it contacts and it should be when you swing. So when you're, again, when you've committed and you're coming down is really when that Q should be happening. Maybe even just a hair later than that. So that's the first part of the attack anyway, and we'll see if I'm going to do two montage switches here, but here's the first one. And now I can follow into the second attack, and it doesn't screw up. 
So that is how you switch a montage. Okay. Now just a quick part two, I guess it might as well. It's not taking too long. Let's switch out the other attack for the other sword attack now, because that one looks kind of clunky. So we'll go over the left-right montage that we had before. Open it up. Switch it to full body, because otherwise it won't do anything. But now when we do it, once again, the input gets it's consumed and it doesn't do anything. So you need to replace all those montages again. Um, just go to your other one. Copy. Paste. So, input buffer. Point of commitment on this one's way early. Pretty much when that rotate owner ends, honestly, but wherever. And that's still a fine point to reset things if I felt like it. Let's try it out. Move that cue. Swinging, which looks really close right there, maybe even just a, just a hair earlier. Come on. Yeah, that looks good. And then the hitbox probably starts somewhere around here. Actually, looks pretty good to me right there. Yeah, so that's how you switch out the second one. It's a lot quicker once you get the, the flow of it. And now, there you go. And all you have to do to add more moves to your combo is add more elements to this data table. Um, one drawback to how DCS is made currently is that it is a one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three system because it's working on an integer. So it builds up and then goes back to one. Um, so you can put however many attacks in your combo that you want, which is cool because you get that still Souls-like feel. But if you wanted to add button combinations, it's not super appropriate for that. So you'd probably want to think of a different system if that's the case. But hope you liked the video and that's, uh, that's how you switch out montages for combat and DCS, even if it includes the ALS.